We spend so much time thinking about the foods we eat, what we drink, is it organic, etc. But we may not be paying enough attention to what we are cooking with, what we are drinking out of, and what we are eating on. In this series of short videos, I'm going to show you how to detox your kitchen in three important areas. Bakeware, cookware, and utensils, plastics, and lastly, soaps, towels, and cleaning tools you will discover healthy kitchen swaps to create a non-toxic kitchen to support your health, the health of your family, and the health of the planet. Make sure to watch all three videos to get all of this crucial health information. I'm Zanana Rose and this is Natural Living with Zanana, where I share information, tips, product reviews to help you live a more healthy, sustainable, natural, and non-toxic lifestyle. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm so excited that you are joining me today. Let's get started with the video. So in this video, we are going to talk about bakeware, cookware, and utensils. And we're starting off with bakeware, so I have have set all of this bakeware in front of me. On the left is all of the items that we want to get rid of. So we really want to get rid of non-stick. We want to get rid of Teflon especially. Teflon is PFAS. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about these chemicals in this video. I will put links in the description down below with places where you can find a lot more information. PFAS is very unhealthy for us. It is endocrine disrupting. It can cause all sorts of cancers and that sort of thing. If you've ever seen the movie Dark Waters, it's a really important one that talks a lot about DuPont and PFAS and what can happen when we are ingesting these very dangerous chemicals. So while Teflon has been banned and is no longer in use, and that is the PTFE and PFOA, which you will see on a lot of pans, it says PTFE and PFOA free. Well guys, guess what? There's next generation chemicals that are out there and they are actually just as bad, if not worse, than the original Teflon PFAS. They're just another generation of these PFAS chemicals. So we really need to get rid of all of them for our own health, for the health of our families, and also for the health of our planet. Because in the manufacturing process, they can get into our waterways and that sort of thing as well. So we want to avoid non-stick, even if it says PTFE and PFOA free. And any next generation chemicals that are basically just regrettable substitutions. Now there is one exception that I will talk about a little bit later in this video, but first of all, let's just say get rid of that non-stick. And I've got several pieces that I have left over from when Chris and I got married, which has been like 14 years ago, guys. And it's time for me to let it go. We're moving, so I'm packing all this stuff up and getting rid of it. This is a turkey baster. It's non-stick. It actually is damaged. I can see that. And it is especially important to get rid of it when you start to see the damage on these pans. So this is worn, there are scratches in it, it's bubbling in some places. So the thing is with nonstick and Teflon, it can be okay to use if you are not heating it past that 350 to 400 degree mark. And they've actually done a lot of studies about that, guys, because people think, oh, I can still use it, it's okay, I'll use it, and I'll just make sure that it doesn't get scratched or go past those high temperatures. Well, they've done studies and within two and a half to three minutes on high on your stove in your oven, these pans can actually get up to that point where they are releasing those toxins into the air and then we are breathing them. So do whatever you would like to do. For me, I just think I'm going to be super safe and when there are plenty of other excellent alternatives, I think there's no reason to mess around with this non-stick stuff. So what can you replace it with? 
This is where we get to talk about the swaps, and that's what I have over here on the right. There are lots of stainless steel turkey roasting racks out there. I haven't purchased one yet, but it is on my list, so I will certainly be doing that. As far as pie pans, glass is such a great option, you guys. I've got some really nice glass ones here. These are Fire King and Pyrex, so both really great options. Here's another Pyrex dish. Glass is wonderful. Ceramic is also an excellent option. I've got ceramic here in this little roasting pan. Here is another ceramic casserole dish from Le Creuset. This is beautiful, quite heavy. It's a little bit heavier than the glass, I would say. So that is one thing to consider when you are purchasing these items is what are you looking for? Are you looking for something more lightweight? That will help you to choose your swaps. And then of course, last but not least, we've got the glass casserole dish as well. I even found these fantastic white ceramic muffin pans, you guys. There's only six in them and they're a little bit bigger, a little more shallow, but they work perfectly. You could even make little egg souffles in these. They're just beautiful. These are made from Swiss. I will put links down in the description to as many of these items as I can so that you can find them if you want to look for them. So check that out for sure. This is a great find and these were really inexpensive too, guys. I'll list all the prices down below as well. Another great alternative is stainless steel. So this is a fantastic Fox Run stainless steel muffin pan. And with stainless steel, it's so fantastic because it's so easy to clean. Even if it starts to get a little dirty, you can just take a little steel wool and polish it right back up. So that is an excellent thing about stainless steel. It's very lightweight, so that's a plus as well. Now, lastly, with stainless steel, we've got these great cookie sheets. This size Size comes with a great little cookie rack and then it also comes in the bigger size and I believe there's one size smaller as well. I just got these on Amazon you guys and they're really inexpensive. I think it was only something like $25 for a pair of these stainless steel cookie sheets and they work so well. I've used mine quite a few times. They have a little bit of staining on them but not much and they're super easy to clean and very lightweight. They are fantastic. So those are the swaps for bakeware. One more thing to talk about in the bakeware department, and that is parchment paper. We really need to make sure that we are getting unbleached parchment paper because in the bleaching process, dioxins are created and those can be released while you're using the product, while you're baking with it. So we really need to be sure that we are getting unbleached parchment paper. Also, sometimes it can be coated with PFAS and other chemicals, so we need to make sure that it is not coated with anything. 365, the Whole Foods brand, they make a great unbleached parchment paper. And also there's another company called If you care that makes a really great line of paper products. So I'll link that down in the description as well. So that's it for bakeware. Next up is cookware. Okay, so next up is cookware. Now I don't have any of the nonstick cookware anymore, but that old Teflon nonstick needs to be banished from your kitchen for your very good health. So what I can show you here is all of the alternatives to that nonstick cookware. So we've got stainless steel. Stainless steel is an excellent option. I have a nice set of emerald stainless steel that I've had for years. It works so well. It's good and heavy duty. It's easy to clean with the steel wool. And next up is cast iron, you guys. Cast iron is excellent. This is my Lodge cast iron. I've been working with this one recently and enjoying it very much. It requires a little bit more care, but it can last a lifetime when you care for it well. And it can actually be quite nonstick if you're cooking for it with it correctly. I've got some other videos about cast iron. I'll put some links to those videos here so that you can check those out at your leisure. Now next we have enameled cast iron. Staub is an enameled cast iron. I love this little pan as well. It's perfect you guys and easier to deal with and clean than 
straight cast iron. So it's a nice option if you're looking for something in between full cast iron and nonstick. Ceramic is also a good option. Ceramic is great for baking if you're going to put something in the oven and you want to bake it. I have this lovely Xterra set and I've used it just a couple of times. I need to practice with this a little more. If any of you have any great recipes that you use when you're using your Xterra cookware or anything else that's ceramic, please let me know. I've used it on the stove and you can see on the bottom it is a little bit worn and like I said I need a little more practice with it. It's not the easiest to cook with I would say but it is really beautiful so it is a nice option that I wanted to include here. Ceramic is perfectly safe and then last but not least is enameled cast iron. So things like Le Creuset that are cast iron with enamel on the inside. I just love these guys. They are so wonderful to cook with. And I've had this one for quite a few years. I got it on sale, thus the color, but it's a great item to have on hand for making soups and roasts. I also have this beautiful enameled cast iron from Marquette Castings. It's a great, less expensive option for wonderful enameled cast iron as well. And I actually use this one more than my Le Creuset. It's just a great shape and a great size. I make soup in it all the time. It's very, very easy to cook in. And then last but not least, let's talk about ceramic nonstick. I'm sure you've heard a lot about ceramic nonstick. It is the safest option if you are going to go non-stick. And I like the green pan. I've had these green pans for quite a few years. This one is still in very good shape and the other one has a few nicks and scratches in it. So this is probably gonna have to go pretty soon, you guys. And that is the thing about these ceramic non-sticks is that they are just not quite as durable as a Teflon type of non-stick. So while they are healthier, they just don't have as much longevity. So that makes it a little harder on the environment because you are going to have to replace it more often. Green Pan uses Thermalon for their coating and Thermalon is one of the sole gel coatings that is a ceramic coating. All ceramic coatings are sole gel and there are several other companies that are using this sole gel type of material. I will put a link to the PFAS free website and you can get a list of all the cookware that is actually safe and PFAS free. There are a couple of other companies like the Always Pan, Caraway, and Green Life, which also use this ceramic nonstick technology. So these are gonna be safe and PFAS free, and they're obviously nonstick. The only thing is that they may not last as long, and you still do need to get rid of them once they start having scratches and exposing the aluminum that is underneath that coating. Now, one thing that I do wanna talk about is I did get an Instant Pot not that long ago. I actually make my dog's food in it, and I do cook for us in it sometimes as well. Now, the Instant Pot comes with this lovely stainless steel pan, and it's perfect. I use it all the time. It's really great, it's heavy duty. You can even cook with it on the stove. So it's a great pan. I also decided to order this ceramic nonstick pot that goes along with your Instant Pot. But you guys, I just don't think I need it. So I'm assuming that this is also the same ceramic nonstick that is in the green pan, but I'm just not sure. So I don't wanna take any risks and I'm gonna go ahead and take this one back because the stainless steel works great. So for me, I just don't need to take that extra risk unless I am 100% certain that is not just a next generation non-stick pot. So that's it for cookware. Let's move on to utensils. So last but not least is utensils. And with utensils, it's pretty simple, guys. You just don't want to be using plastic. Plastic can release phthalates. There can be PFAS in the plastics, and sometimes they even build in things like triclosan and antibiotics to make sure that bacteria doesn't grow on or stick to these plastics. 
I've got two plastic spatulas that I had when we moved here. And I'd say, guys, it's time to get rid of these because plastic and heat just doesn't mix. When you expose the plastic to heat, that is when all of those chemicals that are dangerous and toxic for us can be released into our food. So we wanna switch to things like silicone. So I've got this great spatula, a silicone spatula. These types of spatulas are also good as long as they are silicone and silicone it withstands heat I think it's up to like 500 degrees so those are just fine with the heat the other great thing is wood and I've got a lot of different wood and bamboo type of utensils that are all really fantastic. So anything like this is excellent for cooking. And the other thing that works very well is stainless steel. Again, super safe. There's tons of stainless steel options out there for cooking with so many ladles. You don't wanna get plastic ladles. You're putting those in the heat and that can release those chemicals as well. There are lots of plastic pasta tongs out there. We don't want those either. Stick with stainless steel or something that is silicone. Along with that, your measuring cups, especially if you're gonna be putting any hot liquids in them, need to be stainless steel as well. And spoons are great stainless steel. I mean, really the other thing about stainless steel versus plastic is we have to think of the environment, you guys. And anytime we are buying something that is plastic, it means that that plastic plastic has to be manufactured. And even in the manufacturing process, they're using a lot of water, they, they're using chemicals, and those chemicals can be polluting our environment. Not to mention that this has to be thrown out and there's no way to recycle it at all. So at least with stainless steel, with wood, it's going to either be able to be recycled or it's going to biodegrade, no problem in the environment. So I think we need to think about that even with all of the items that we're bringing into our kitchen. And that leads me to the next video. The next video is going to be all about plastics. So make sure to look out for that video, hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you get notified of all upcoming videos. And if you've enjoyed this information, give it the thumbs up, hit the like button. That lets YouTube know that this is valuable information and it helps this video get out to everyone that needs it. And by the way, if this is interesting to you and you know someone else who would enjoy it, please share this video. I really appreciate that. It just helps my channel grow. All right, friends, thank you so much for stopping by. I wish you all the very best of health and I'll see you really soon.